Welcome to the podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Also, thanks to my Patreon subscribers. I really appreciate you. If you really like this episode, please share, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 37th edition of the podcast today. With me here is Julia Donaldson. She's very famous for her work, especially with young children. He's a He's a So, first of all, thank you for uh, your time. I know you're quite busy oh, today. Well, thank you for hosting this event. I've never never signed books in Croatia before. So really? A no, new experience for me. Well, I was quite surprised by the number of the people that attended this. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, this globalization thing. You know, when you find you've got fans yes. all over the world. We were in India earlier this year, and they were... Same thing, same thing there. So you were famous all over the world. The whole world. Soon, yes. yeah. <laughs> so I just have to go to Mars next, I think. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this is your first time in Croatia. Um, it's not actually. I was in Dubrovnik about ten years ago, but not. It's my first time as a as an author in Croatia. Oh, so your first official visit. In my first official. Visit. So how do you feel about children all over the world really appreciating your books? Well, it's great because I don't know what. They're reading in a way because the books are translated by so many different people. I've heard that the Croatian translations are very, very good. Yes, it is. Yeah. I've read both uh, yeah. editions. And you and think the Croatian one's better, do you? Well, I, <laughs> I really can't say. <laughs> okay. I, I think it's true to the original. That's, that's mm -hmm. the most important thing. Uh, one thing, uh, two days ago I was with my niece and she saw on my cell phone that uh, I was doing something, uh, sharing the event, this event. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know that uh, she, they read your books in uh, her in school. school. Do, they, do they do them in Croatian? In or, Croatian, or, yes. Right, in okay. Croatian. But there are some classes in English where they well, read it in English also. English. Yes. Mm -hmm. heartwarming to see all those kids mm. flocking here and they uh, how do you feel about that also? oh great but it's a shame I can't really talk to them you know yes, yes, I mean I did just... learn a few words but I think I've already got, I learned to say where is someone <laughs> I forgot what was that what is how do you say where is Gdje je? Gdje je? Gdje je? Gdje je? Gdje je? and I did learn the word for friend but I forgot not already because it's P pre. What's friend in Croatian? Prijatel. 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 Yeah, it's friend in Croatian. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, uh, where did you get the inspiration for? For which book? For the Gruffalo. Oh, for the Gruffalo. Um, really, it was from an old um, traditional story, a Chinese story about a fox and a tiger. But nothing would rhyme with tiger, so I changed the tiger into a Gruffalo and I added some other bits. Uh, it's interesting because the story reminds me, the original Gruffalo story reminds me of a boy who cried wolf, but it's kind of reversed. Um, yeah, well, the, I've got another book, which is a re really is a reversed boy who cried wolf. That's a story about a fish 
called Tiddler, and this fish tells stories, makes up stories all the time, but in the end he gets lost, and the way he finds his way home is through the trail of his stories, because his stories have spread throughout the ocean. Oh. So the moral of that is you should tell stories, whereas the moral of the boy who cries wolf is... You know, you mustn't tell stories. Yes, yeah. you, you, you mustn't lie yes, because when yes, something yes. happens, then people mm -hmm. will try. Uh, also, you wrote n numerous other books, and this is one of them. This is the Ugly Five. Ruzna, Ruzna Ruzna Petorka. Petorka. The Ugly Five. So, what is this book about? Well, this is about five ugly animals in Africa. I went to Africa and I went on a safari, and I knew about the big five, like lion leopard, elephant, buffalo, and one other, I can't remember. <laughs> and, but our guide told us that there are also five animals called the ugly five. So it's the warthog, the wildebeest, and etc. So I just suddenly thought, I suddenly knew what the story was going to be. Uh, I won't tell you now because it would spoil it from the yes, people. We're not so spoil yes, it was inspired by a visit to South Africa. And how was it like there? In South Africa. In South Africa. Um, well, again, you know, there's a lot of people do know the books, which is nice. Um, it was it was great. I think my, the most enjoyable part was when we went to a township, very poor um, area, and we were in a tin shed, really, a corrugated iron shed, very, very hot, because it was February, very hot time of year. But all these kids were there who didn't, lots of them didn't really speak English. But when I got them to act out my stories, there's one story, a squash and a squeeze, and in the, in the story, a cow jumps on the table. The boy being the cow, he just jumped on this table. He was just so great, much better than the English children back home. So that was a lovely experience. Yes, children can relate to that really easily. <laughs> Uh, how were you as a child? Did, did your childhood also inspire you to become an art uh, yes, definitely, writer? Yes, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, you know, I like poetry. Um, I came from quite a musical home, so there was always singing, and my father played the cello, so music was a big, big thing. So, I th And I started off then writing songs. That's how I became a writer, through, through writing through songs. Poetry. So... Kind of childhood molded you to later to become mm. a writer. Yeah, and obviously the books I read, you know, as well. Um, and perhaps your favorite books from that time. Yes, yes. Um, well, I don't know if you would know them, you know. If, I mean, some things like obviously Alice in Wonderland and Winnie the Pooh. Winnie like the Pooh, that. that's yeah. really, really mm. uh, famous book, I would say. Children all over the world recognize this. Yeah, but they tend to know the Disney. Version. Yes, and I think yes, that's, that's a shame in a way because I think they changed it quite a lot. Uh, yes, and they the pictures, did. the cartoon pictures aren't the same as the ones in the original book. Perhaps uh, it is a good way for children to learn about something. Maybe, and then maybe. But I worry, in my own case, I worry about that because there have been films made of my books. And so far that's all right when they have merchandise. It's going back to the illustrations of the books, but I wouldn't like it if all the images of the Gruffalo were from the film, even though I think the film's very good. Yes, yeah. yes, I've seen some uh, mm -hmm. scenes from the movie, and it, in my opinion it's very true to the original it illustrations. Is, it is, it yeah. So how do you feel about that uh, adaptation? Yes, well not just that one, but the same company has done several, they've done Stickman very well, they've done a book called The Highway Rat, about a very wicked rat who tyrannizes all the other animals and he, because he's got a very sweet tooth he just wants their chocolates and biscuits and cookies and things um, they're all very well done and they're very respectful to me and to the illustrator Axel Scheffler they always consult us along the way so I'm, I'm delighted with them uh, perhaps you don't know but I've seen many many narrations of your books on YouTube what, by children, mainly, or, or uh, just... Children and mm. adults, yes. with animation. I also saw the Gruffalo's child uh, narrated and also animated. 
really? by someone someone again well, <laughs> really I'm not sure I'm not sure if it's totally legal really <laughs> yes. but, um, I someone was really that, creative yes. <laughs> with your work mm-hmm. so it's really popular especially in this day and age of the internet to rem- remix the the work so uh, what are your next plans for your next book um, well, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say oh, yeah, I, I am allowed to say um, because as well as doing books with Axel Scheffler I have other illustrators so I've got a book coming out later this year called The Cook and the King and it's it's based on a story actually that my son made up for my granddaughter and I thought he'd made up such a good story that I, I made it rhyme and I you know but I, mean, I have credited it, him I have credited him <laughs> in the book so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to give him half my royalties or not decided <laughs> well he should get something <laughs> but the trouble is he's got a brother who would then say that's not fair because I gave you the idea for this other book so it's all a bit tricky yeah it's family business don't <laughs> it's always complicated uh, well uh, how do you like it here in Croatia you, this was not your first time you it's not the say. first time but I uh, went to Dubrovnik 10 years ago but also this time we've been to Kruk did I say that right? yes yes it's you said difficult Kruk. for us to say these words with no vowels <laughs> Kruk, Kruk. sounds like a little bird <laughs> um, which we loved, really loved that we just spent three days there and um, yeah, I loved the sea and the little hilltop, went to little hilltop town, had very nice food, much better food this time than ten years ago, ten years ago when we were in Dubrovnik, I don't know why but we didn't, we never seemed to have very good food, this time I've had some wonderful food, in fact we're about to go out for another wonderful mm-hmm. dinner I hope <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, well the the food uh, is really much better, how I say. The fish, so lovely, and cook, you know, all the fresh fish. It's yes, delicious. especially, especially. Well, thank you so much okay, for thank you. Uh, this short podcast. Uh, thank you for your time. I know you were very busy. And as we've seen, we had a really big rush. So I want you all the best of luck with your next book and other books. And we'll see you again real soon, tomorrow, actually. And thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, you can also subscribe right here and you can become my Patreon supporter, please consider this. And also you can watch other episodes in the playlist. Thank you so much, we'll see you again in next podcast. Bye!